We are the Iron Disciples. In this podcast, we talk about bodybuilding, dating, finances, with the goal of being a better man, son, brother, husband, and father, with the focus of building strong families. Exploring these topics from a biblical standpoint, how to do these things as Christian men. Hello. Hello. Hey guys. What's going on, guys? Any Anything different? Well, it probably doesn't look that much different since it's all dark and bl- <laughs> it's a black background, but we're in a new studio. Minus the yeah. Mesa Boogies and the Marshalls and all the badass <sighs> metal guitar stuff. I kind of miss that, to yeah. be honest. <laughs> but at the same time, we got look. More, we got so much more room for activities. Yeah, I, I can fly like an airplane <laughs> up here, you know? Well, Just they can't like, really see it, but... <laughs> oh, my God. This is great, guys. It's like a movie theater. Yeah. This I is like crazy. it. It's got good vibes. This has been a project we've been working on for a couple weeks now, and yeah, yeah. we'll be able to have more guests on and yeah it's it was tight when we do four of us yeah uh, the old place. yeah uh, my, our house and now we're at mike's house so this is the patio that we hit you or patio back room florida room or whatever you call it yeah we have ac but it's it's warm in it's here. warm in here right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> even with these blackout curtains which we were expecting to kind of do a little bit of work for us apparently oh they do work yeah well i mean it, we would probably be dead in here if they weren't on so yeah. it's just amazing Florida. Welcome to Florida. You're yeah. gonna be really <laughs> welcome to summer in Florida. <laughs> Got our shoes but yeah, this off. looks great. You guys, mm. I, Joe and uh, Mike, put up this wonderful, like it's like a slide, almost like what you have in a shower. So you can move these. So like if we can open the windows, we have like some sound foam board in the back here. Um, it looks really nice, and it's more space. And obviously, we don't have to interfere with Joe's studio life anymore. Setting up that table, breaking it down every time. Yeah. So it'll be a permanent fixture, and I'm super. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Right? We got it. We yeah. updated. We look good now. We look a little more pro. Yeah. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Feel like. <laughs> Let it. us know. <laughs> yeah. Play right. ping pong up here. Yeah. yeah. Scrabble. We could do some uh, <laughs> Bikram. Isn't that like hot yoga? Oh yeah. It yeah. right on that. Up. We're yeah, almost there. Guys. Yeah. Open these windows up. Put some mirrors on that side. Just really. Bring it in. I've thought Good. about turning. I thought about turning half this room into like a sauna because <laughs> I remember that would yeah, be great. I was thinking that was my, that would be we my should other have project. Like, yeah. Uh, By the way, podcast I, in the sauna, bro. That'd be hilarious. Get out the truth. It's just kind of Joe Rogan in. would be a massive supporter of I that. I think yeah. it's a great. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how the twenty equipment. minute podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how like the uh, we could do it, but it would have to be with like one of the smaller like uh, recorders, and we'd have to probably put it in like some. Some a cooler or something. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But uh, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible, guys. I think we should do it too. Yeah, Calm I down. took um, I took, I took my little heat gun. It's like takes it's a probe. I use it for cooking all the time for grilling. Infrared. Infrared. <laughs> yeah. And I took this thing to the to the gym today when I was inside of the sauna, and I was because you know it has that little wooden thermometer up there. Yeah. The fake we've news. always known that thing. Mike fake talks news. about fake yeah. news. <laughs> fake news. <laughs> But I just wanted to know how fake the news was. Extremely. So I brought it in there, and it was 140 degrees. And I looked up at that little plaque. That little thing is like looks like it came out of some, you know, said 180. I bet. 200 degrees. And Lies so I did our little trick, seat. and I put the thing on there. And in like 10 minutes, it got up to about 170, 175. About 15 minutes, just clear up to 180. And you're sweating your balls. Off. Oh, it's then it's on. But it took around 10 minutes for it to come back down. So like when I went out. I took the thing off, uh, took a shower, went back in. It was about 160. So, well, that's a tiny. Just so sauna. you guys know, I did a Thanks. little bit of data research on our awesome. little sauna. My suspicions were and correct. They are correct, 100. percent <laughs> Places <laughs> worse. <laughs> I'm a it's sauna bad. connoisseur. I know what. I know when they're hot. Yeah, I'm not a fan of infrared saunas. Like oh, I need no, just no, pure, no. real <laughs> coils. I don't know what the point of. I need are. to feel real heat. <laughs> I don't want to be microwave. I don't want to radiate my bones. Yeah. Man heat up my whole body you know yeah <laughs> dude and like joe rogan right he's he doesn't do it as often but i remember there's a time where like the last five minutes he was really getting these epiphany like understanding like he go that's what the sauna is made for bro yeah you know and i'm like this is great and it would be cool to do like a sweat podcast but heck yeah we just kind of silently we don't the, need the video the in there we just need to be able to get the microphones yeah through. we could even do a video if it has like a glass door or something you could just, just leave do it, it with the phones yeah, yeah. or yeah you could just get it through the the uh, the glass window, but yeah, the last five minutes of the sauna is like that's what I'm interested. <laughs> that's what I'm interested. <laughs> you know, for a while, death, yeah, I want to see that one. Yeah, off the charts, dude. You know, Let's we didn't have excited the sauna, for that. We would do baths and uh, mm-hmm. really hot baths, too just hot. Get a hot tub. They were not good. 
they were kind of probably uh, lobster boiling. Productive, yeah. yeah. But I would sit in this bath and I'd have the light off, you know. And I started doing these things because I was copying Joe Rogan. I was like, "What is this true? You know, like, is, am I going to get some good thoughts at the end? Like deprivation style? Yeah, and it's true. You do, but you, the trick is you can't be looking at your phone. You can't have anything going on at all for the whole time you're in the bath. And then it's true. Like your brain will kind of surrender, and you'll think about like one thing, and you'll actually get into it. And I was taking these little bathroom videos. It's totally dark. And I'd like listen to him back and be like, oh, that is kind of cool. No, I'm Socrates. I, I am Plato. No, no, not at all. <laughs> but uh, it was cool. It was definitely yeah. a cool little exercise. And Joe Rogan is spot on with that when you're in pain and you're thinking at the same time, there's something really cool about that. You know, those float tanks I've been interested in. My one buddy's been doing that, the deprivation tanks or whatever yeah. they're called. Yep. Yeah, those are good. You just yeah. sit in those are complete good. silence for like an hour. Yeah, or two or three or four. He's laying there, and it's yeah, it'd be interesting. going insane. Uh, there's a dude. Should. He's a Chinese. I think he's Orient. I don't know. He's Asian inventor. He's like has like a bajillion inventions. It's almost ridiculous how Is much he the this guy dude's created invented. the pencil underwater. So he holds his breath, yeah. and he's in torturous pain <laughs> at the very end. And that's when he says he comes up with his best ideas. It's uh, sort of comparative to the end of the sauna. You know, yeah. it's a, just the pain thing. You're just real with yourself. So, yeah, this yeah. kind of leads us into what we're say, talking about today. You guys have been torturing yourself this week. This is day three of John and I's. Every four weeks we go on a 84-hour fast. So this is day three. Tomorrow we'll break our fast, which is which is great. But um, it's kind of like three and a half days. It's 84 hours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, So it's a lot of pain and suffering. And that's kind of what we're talking about today. Some of the tools the Bible gives us to uh, confront, as Joe Rogan says, the inner bitch and also bring us closer to God. And there's a whole lot of other benefits that happen with your body um, that I'll get into a little later. But I want John to take this on because he's the one who was the one who made the fasting a part of our lives. Um, yeah, Jesus and Moses and Daniel, they had nothing to do with this. I just was like. <laughs> we need to fast and uh, <laughs> petition the Lord. People need to stop eating and pray. No. So it comes from the Bible. I think um, in the beginning, we, none of us counted on the Iron Disciples growing the way it did. Uh, so it was just mainly no friends hanging out. Yeah, it was just like friends and peers hanging out together, and it was very uh, open form, no structure, nothing like that. Saturday mornings, coffee yeah. and Bible study. Talk about your life, dude. Exactly. Let's read the and Bible it was together. Super fun that Hang period out. of time. Uh, so as things began to grow, and we had the the uh, the responsibility of discipleship became real. So I'm not only hanging out with guys who are sort of, <laughs> I'm not going to say, with we each shared and would sharpen each other. But in this new circumstance with these new guys, there was a lot we were trying to be responsible. We had to be for. more structured. We had to be more structured. We had to address issues, and so all of a sudden you have church. And so within church, we had to take on leadership roles. It was something we were, I know I was hesitant to take on. Uh, you know, God picks people Ooh. and he pre equips them when he sends them out. And so part of that equipping process is getting serious about hearing God's voice, using those tools that you, like Joe had brought up the idea today, prayer, fasting. Those are two of the main tools you use to align yourself with what God wants from you, what you're trying to listen. And um, so we started that, and that's where it began. Um, I was very interested, and in, in, I, I was convicted, man, down to my heart. I was like, these people, God gives you these people to look after. You're shepherding these people. I don't care if it's one, two, three, a hundred, a thousand. They're there, and God put them there, and you're, you need to step up. So you need to be serious about this. So, um, you know, Jesus, take it for instance. It's most everybody knows about the forty days in the wilderness, right? Brutal. That's what he did before he went full fledged into his ministry, and so he'd prepare through fasting and this deprivation of the carnal self with prayer. And those two things go together. So it's fasting and prayer. Um, of course, Bible reading and all this other stuff can be present. Stack it up, dude. You know, do whatever you want. Make your sandwich. You know, you got those two buns. Fasting, prayer, you know, put whatever you want in the middle, sandwich it up. It's going to be good. The more you fit in there, the better sandwich you're going to have. So I was looking at uh, Stop Jesus. Stop talking about sandwiches, dude. I know. I'm fasting. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. You wake up in the middle of the night dreaming about, like, food. Like, okay. Yeah. It's, it's no no breaks here. But uh, purple oysters. 
that was a good dream. Not per- they were like, uh, anyway, don't want to confuse the audience. So uh, really try to do that. We started with three days uh, or two days. Was it two or three days? I started it off two. with a three day before we had done a two day, but that wasn't uh, until the three days started in November. Yeah. And then we had done a couple two days. I had done two days and then you had done three days. And I was like, that's so November is when we started doing started. the 72 and then the uh, December turned into the 84. And then it's been going on since then. Right. And so we use it to focus our attention on what God wants us for the coming month. And to also end the month that you just came through and be thankful for it and listen to God's direction. So it's been an exercise of faith. And uh, like I was saying, Jesus used this before he entered his ministry. Um, Moses. Moses, I mean, he did three 40-day fasts um, and with no water. What about Elijah? Uh, or Though he prayed? Daniel. 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 Daniel was probably the first story that I read personally that blew my mind because of the power of fasting. Mm. And um, you, you begin to see how, how God has this spiritual domain set up and you're influencing it. Like there's, there's stuff going on that you can do here in this plant, you know, in this carnal sort of material place we're in now, you know, space, time, energy, matter, whatever, the four things that comprise this dimension we're in. And we do things in this dimension that affect the spiritual realm where you have angels, demons, other heavenly beings. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a world. It's a real world. And I was always fascinated. Spiritual warfare, spiritual world, fasting. Yes. So by that, I'll, I'll pull up this little story about Daniel. Um, it's not a story. It's not fiction. It's absolute truth. And, um, I'll read it. So I, you guys can kind of see the, um, the power here. Yeah, when I heard about this, I thought that was pretty cool, because um, I think we there definitely is spiritual warfare going on, things that are unseen but behind the scenes <laughs> 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 that are powerful, and um, it's cool to see someone who is as close to a God as Daniel was utilizing this um, to get his prayers through to heaven. That's right. Yeah. So, I'll do a little quick read through. You guys, hang on. If you got your Bibles with you or your phone, uh, it's Daniel chapter 10. Okay? I'm going to pick up on verse 2. So, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat, or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. On the 24th day of the first month, I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a man clothed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Uphaz around his waist. His body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like flaming torches. He's describing an angel right now. It's pretty freaky. Apparently, every time you see an angel, you're probably going to have some, some doo-doo in your pants. <laughs> and so he's sitting there, kind of, He's so he says, picking up on the end of verse 7, but I great trembling fell upon me, and they... F- Fled to hide them. So I left alone, blah, 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 blah. Okay. We're going to kind of go fast forward to the bottom right here where the angel is uh, talking to Daniel. Okay. Let me find out where I am here. Doo-doo in the pants. Like, seeing an angel's got to be hardcore. I mean, they're, they're like demons, except good. So they both... You can you can I tell mean, like I, they're both kind I of would frightening. Think they can just even present angels. themselves to you however they feel too. You think they can shape shift? I think they yeah sort of. Well, I mean yeah you're right. In Sodom and Gomorrah they came as men. Yeah, yeah that makes and sense. There's just plenty of different descriptions of them. Right, and demons can possess people, so obviously they can kind of take on. Yeah, they they have some some yeah. different shape shifting, okay. possessing powers. Very much, and the angels sometimes they look like dudes. And then they'll say, like, you don't know you'll be entertaining angels. Other times, like in Revelation. That video game you showed me is Diablo. Them (laughs) angels were badass. Okay. That's what that sounds like right there. That's what that reminds me. Yeah, or John in Revelation. He's, like, constantly worshiping angels. Like, oh, God, it's not God. It's not God. It's an angel. Oh, my God. So badass. It's just like, whoa. Okay, so verse 12. Sorry, I had to kind of look for it. Um, The angel says, fear not, Daniel, for the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before God, your words have been heard. So he's saying you fasted, you're repenting on behalf of Israel. God's going to hear you. He's hearing, it's, it's, it's almost like 
when you did these things, God heard you. When you did the bicep of curls, course, your biceps grew. But the thing to really take into consideration is God hears everything, right? So it's not like he just opened up his ear channels like, oh, I heard him because he did No, he hears everything. It's God is responding because of this. So when you see that res- heard, don't get that confused. Like God is omnipotent, omnipresent, ubiquitous. He's everywhere. He's saying he responded because of what he'd done. Important thing to, th- to understand, especially when reading the Old Testament, okay? Um, that I have come because of your words, your prayers. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days, but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia and came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days. The vision is for the days yet to come. So he's describing prophecy to Daniel. Now, the part to really understand from that those two verses, after we see where Daniel was, he's repenting, he's fasting, is that because of his fasting and his prayer, he... This angel is in a spiritual battle. He's fighting the prince of Persia, which is another word. Okay, so this is another thing for people to understand. This is getting a little deeper here into the domain of spiritual warfare. Go deep. This is Satan's world, right? He has domain over it. He's not like God where he has, you know, ubiquitous omnipresence. He doesn't. So he's relying on these fallen angels, uh, these heavenly beings that are on his side to govern and to to take on the responsibilities of these different land masses. And you'll see that clearly. You have Molech, um, one of the old gods. You have even Odin, right? A lot of these people will know about Odin because he's big in the Vikings. These are real demons with real power. And they've been given president's control over a certain portion of land. So the prince of Persia... Very high ranking, like you had a uh, Belzebub, right? You have and that was a, that was actually a Babylonian god that they started to use as a, a another name, as a, a synonym for Satan. Same thing with Prince of Persia. So this angel is fighting to get through on behalf, and because of Daniel's fasting and his prayer, he helped that angel to do the work that he had to do. That blew my mind. I, I read that and I was like, wow. You know, and it's easy to skip over these things, but if you really settle on what's what the the conditions that are being talked about, prayer, fasting, spiritual battles, you know, the fact that these spirit these angels have to deal with demonic forces the same way we do, well, in a different way, but they're still contending with them, um, and the fact that we can help. Um, yeah, so that reminds me, when you're fasting, you're subduing your flesh, it must mean that your spirit's coming up in power. Therefore, your prayers will probably be more powerful. They obviously, are. Um, one thing I was thinking about, this is kind of a weird thought, but if God's in, you know, omnipresent, why does he need angels? It's kind of a weird thought, but just one I was thinking about. You know, why didn't he do all the work himself? I understand for Satan, but for God, I don't know. It's interesting. Well, I think he's trying to sharpen and grow his family. So, like, um, angels are a different form of, of his family. And so, uh, take, for instance, right. us. We're yeah. discipling, like, I'm. we're discipling the guys in our group, right? God is using us to accomplish those tasks, um, whereas he's doing the same. Why would he need a family, right? Like, God's infinite. He's loneliness, beyond types. man. Mm-hmm. Not just loneliness. Family's better. Um, I don't think God's necessary. And that's a, that's a very deep question. Why does God want a family? Well, he's the source of love. You know, so I think um, the idea of autonomous, uh, sovereign beings, are, he, he wants more of that. You know, he wants true relationship, true love, all that stuff. But so... Does God know exactly what's going to happen every single passing moment? Of course. But those angels are, are sort of, they're operating. Could God snap his fingers and have this whole story just coalesce into one second? Yeah, but he has it this way for a reason. So, um, and yeah, I, th- it's, it's just I think a he thought. uses that stuff mm. as faith builders, too. Like It's not like Daniel was needed fasting to accomplish that, but God used Daniel in that to accomplish that. Exactly. And then that builds Daniel's faith in the, so it's an exercise for Daniel right. to grow right. rather than what was actually actually accomplished because mm-hmm. God can accomplish that anyway. Exactly, and then it also gives us the 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 template of of humble service, right? To humble ourselves, um, to reinforce the fact that there's a carnal sacrifice, battle. right? There's um, so much discipline packed into that. Giving up yeah. your pleasures for more power, essentially. Exactly. Yeah, because that's what it is. It's power. It's yeah. power. So what has been, so you've been doing this fasting routine now, how many months? Since November. November. And what what have you gotten out of it? A lot. 
Um, every time I fast, we fast, it gets easier. Number one, um, the first time it was it was tougher. The body sort of recognizes, oh, this is happening again. So I feel like I fall into ketosis a lot quicker every time. Uh, it's less painful. Um, uh, the th- thought train gets really good. So the first couple times it was like day two. I would get that clarity and that just laser beam focus and like, whoa, all the other static, all this sort of like my thoughts would just became clear. Um, Problems in my life would come and I'd be like, they'd be in like slower motion. Whereas before I'd be like threatened or be like, oh, it's too much, too fast. What do I do? No, then it'd be like they'd slow down and I could I could I could accommodate things and, and put things into places. So it was really great for thought process. Like John said, we had these new things. We had businesses starting. We had, we had, um, yeah, like albums coming out. We had a bunch of stuff. And it was how do we do a lot of things so um, at once, at one time. So that was a big part of the fasting was to get 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 the thoughts right, and get right with God, find out what He wanted us to do, and um, that's a powerful thing. Uh, the we only do water. We do like some pickle juice for some electrolytes. We do magnesium. We do a morning blend, which is gigantic, but there's no calories in any of it. Um, so, and then water, and that's it. And then we had some coffee today, um, which we'd only start doing the last two times. So, um, just water. Sleep is okay. Um, sometimes it's better than other times. Sometimes your body just is cranking. It's pretty interesting. Like, the l- once you get deprived, it's um, the digestion takes a lot out of your body. You almost have, you're almost lucid. At, at, at night you're getting rest but you're not sleeping it's yeah we weird. actually started to take baths um before sleep we did this the last to help with sleep to help sort of exhaust the body and prepare it for sleep right so hit the sauna or go like take a bath before bed and that would just put you to bed a lot better that's a great tip um so it gets easier and it gets um it gets you get you fall into that state quicker yeah i was going to touch on that so For people who don't know, ketosis is where your body goes from burning fuel. Um, Let's just call it the normal way. Okay, So the normal way is it's breaking down fuel from your food. And usually the normal way means you're having carbs. So ketosis, for those of you unfamiliar, means you're making ketones. And your body's just working on this uh, different form of fuel. And that form of fuel um, for a lot of people is... uh, It's fat. It's fat, right? But for a lot of people, it's more... um, They feel more productive. They feel more clear. There's no insulin spikes. There's a lot of these different stuff that will happen. Like insulin spikes are serious. Like usually when you eat a bowl of pasta or a bunch of donuts or something like that, you want to sleep. And that's because your insulin, your endocrine system is responding to that excess of of sugar and carbs. And it's like, you know, it's, it's a massive shift that's going on in your body. So as we went through these fasts and our body's acclimating and learning and anticipating fasts, um, that period of time of that switch over to key ke- to being in ke- to ketosis it's quicker was quicker and much better and that's probably the best uh it was really encouraging because in the in the beginning that switch can be a little hard it's a little tough and your body doesn't want to let go and it might last two days you know of it you takes sort of more willpower it. takes some a little it's Definitely. more painful it's so, just more painful it gets passing gets less painful as you go right. on as you do it more often it gets less painful kind of is uh, I don't know. That's a double-edged sword, you know. It's kind of good, but kind of the part about fasting is being suffering, putting mm-hmm. yourself in pain. Um, that's a big part of of like fasting, and um, being a bodybuilder. For you guys who are bodybuilding and want to fast, um, I haven't lost any gains at all. Um, every time I come out of a fast, I'm stronger. Um, my 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 endurance goes up. Everything goes up. My recovery goes up. Um, injuries nagging pain stuff like that usually go away now the first couple times we fasted everything was inflamed and hurt way worse like my lower back was effed in the a like my everything was like inflamed it was like an angry body but now it's getting a lot easier and a lot better um so there's a couple parts within fasting that occur that um that talk about cell regenesis so there's autophagy Autophagy is like the regenesis within parts of the cells. It's basically autophagy. It's eating oneself. Um, that's the Greek terminology of it. Um, so cells will do this. And when you're in a deficit, it's regenerative. It's regenerative. 
um, when you're in a um, a surplus, surplus, you're building stuff. It's abundance. It's growth. It's, it's expenditures. And your body can kind of go through this thing where it's just building, building, building. And you have like trash hanging out in your body. And it's like we don't. it doesn't pay attention to it. It's too focused on building other stuff. So when you go into a deficit, it's longevity. It's preservation-based. It's how can we preserve what we have. So all your cells are going, okay, this, is, this protein is folded messed up. And um, we're going to eat this little protein since it's not useful to us anymore. So your whole body starts doing this. It starts going for all these misfolded proteins inside the cell. And it starts to, to consume those, turn them into sugars. And that's a lot of what you get out of your energy. So it's a double-edged sword. You're getting your energy out of it. You're getting rid of misfolded proteins. And you're starting to align. These cells are becoming, basically taking your, your little cars, if you imagine them being cars, to the body shop. They're all getting revamped, new oil in there, you know, tur turned around. So that happens for different people. Once you hit ketosis, it could happen within like 12 hours. It could happen within 14. If you're really fat and you have a ton of glycogen stores in your liver and you're like, you know, one of those people, and it could take you 24 to 48 hours. Depending on how much glycogen you have, John and I eat pretty lean all the time, so we don't have a fatty liver. So we hit ketosis relatively quickly, and we continue doing cardio and stuff like that during our fast. We do not train. That does not happen. Um, that's not a point of our fast. It's on a deload week that we take after, so this whole week is about fasting and deloading. And the next week, we will start to train again. So autophagy, the recycling, the eating of one's cell, the eating of one's self, little misfolded proteins. After autophagy comes in, there's apoptosis, which occurs, which is the recycling of entire cells. That's when an entire cell gets recycled and taken, taken back. And we get new stem cells, new uh, immune cells. It goes down for some of those, like, those cells that are less regenerative. And what's really cool is they found out that your brain, your neurons actually get regenerated. Actually, apoptosis occurs because they thought How it cool was is that? your That's neurons great. were spared because your your brain is spared from like everything. It's your freaking brain. So your body's like, let's protect this. It's the last resort. So they didn't think that apoptosis was occurring within your neurons, but they it actually is. So um, they took mice and they went through and they they measured the proteins. And we, when you do go in, and this has to do with the clarity of the mind that we're talking about as well. Because like ketosis, yes, it definitely will help you clear energy source. It's cleaner. It's less spiky, no insulin spikes. However, you also have these neurons that are regenerating as well. So over time, you're going to, you, your neurons get they regenerated. So if you're going through like a brutal time, like we were, like business and the album and the iron disciples and all this stuff and our brains are kind of like shutting down like too much cannot compute dying when you're going through something like when you're going through a, a deep fast two to three days you're going to have that regenerous that regeneration of your neurons so it's going to help you become smarter it's going to help your brain be more efficient which i thought was really cool because we're all talking with autophagy and apoptosis they known for your other organs like your organs your liver especially it gets worked out, and it gets it's super good. I mean, if you have problems with drinking or if you're any type of thing, we have any kind of fatty liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver, whatever it is, super good thing to do for your for your liver. Um, but it, we know that this this occurs, and now it occurs in our brain. Super cool benefits that are, that are absolutely absolutely God put in to action with being in a state of deficit. This is about being in a deficit, and. Um, I think it's really interesting because this applies to our country, too. I was thinking, you know, when you live in a country like ours, which we have so much abundance, so much always everything, 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 always the time, we're not taking care of, like, the nitty-gritty little tiny things that sometimes when you're in a state of deficit, you have to go and take care of all the little, you have to be super frugal. You, you have to take care of the little itty-bitty things, you know, the little moving parts, the, the which, uh, which it, God kind of, he values um, sacrifice. He values not being in a state of abundance all the time, and that, I think he that is something that is uh, it cross fades into so many other different parts of life that I thought was pretty interesting. Yeah, God wants us to be in abundance of spirit. So, like when you're when you talk about deficit, you're subjecting your body, and when I think about the body's response, it's like digestion takes up so much of your blood. So much of your blood is tied up in digestion. If you're eating five three or five meals a day, that blood's going to be in your gut. So when you stop eating, all of a sudden, like Joe had talked about his lower back inflaming. When I first went through it, my shoulder would, 
and flame in the beginning, and then it would actually resolve and get quite a bit better. I, I'd go into the gym like, man, on that fast, I could tell some work got done in there. And so the body is like like a waiter. I like to use that sort of analogy. Like a waiter, I don't know if anybody's worked in the service industry, but sometimes you'll get in what's called in the weeds. And you'll be having, you know, five or six tables. One wants t uh, water. Another one wants napkins. Some need a full order. And you can't deal with all of them completely. So you're just getting napkins for that one. You're keeping them kind of on board with just the bare minimum. And your body, as you age, will kind of start to do that. And so you'll get into these chronic uh, infl inflammation phases and your body's just like, well, I can't fix this shoulder completely because I got digestion. I got all this other stuff. So I'm going to just send a little inflammation over there. And then that's all it can do for, for a long, long time. And then the body actually starts to actually it starts to shut down because it's overworked. And so it's fatigued. And so a lot of times people have autoimmune disorders from prolonged um, un 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 dealt with issues in the body and so it, it causes the immune system and the central nervous system to reset um, and that's one of the most beneficial things you can have because it gives it a break um, digestion is one of those things that it's funny like your organs they usually don't hurt until they're broken you know like when people are having a heart attack it's like the heart has already underwent so much damage and so much misuse but it's not giving you the same cues like your muscle would, right? Um, the organs are different that way. They don't have the same nervous, uh, the nerve endings don't react the same way. Um, they're connected to your thamus, the bo or th thalamus, the bottom part of your region of your brain, like what lizards have. You know, you're not thinking about your heart beating or, or your liver function. You know, your brain kind of deals with that autonomously. It's like, I'll handle that for you. And so when things get really, really bad, you'll feel pain. You know, and you'll be like, and then it's too late, usually at that point. So going back to the waiter, right? The waiter's in the weeds, and he's tripping over. He's dropping drinks. You know, your body's like, I got all these issues. Um, what do I do to, to let him know? It's usually inflammation. So it sends inflammation to the body. Your digestion starts to get worse. You know, um, there's all these little clues that if you're being sensitive to your body, that dialogue, you'll, you'll, you'll hear them. You know, brain fog, um, just just chronic inflammation in certain areas of your body. Yeah, your I was going to say the symptoms it. are usually in your skin, your blood work, yeah. your eye color. There's they don't they don't uh, they don't uh, they don't present no. themselves and in sensations. Too many people so are living in this as a normative state, so they just acquiesce and say, "Oh, that's the way it is." Getting old, so that's why when you do fast first, and this is the encouragement for those like. It's God gives the best gifts, man. They're always so great. You're going to have spiritual gains in the terms of closeness with God. And just the desire for closeness and intimacy go up through the roof when you fast. I mean, you're literally thinking about God. It, it's, it's like switches go off in your spirit where you're like, I don't know. It's so much more real. All of a sudden, the world, the reality of the world just takes a back seat. And the spiritual reality is like in focus. And it's amazing. But then your body also has that wonderful regenerative to face like Joe talked about a top pop a top apoptosis out of uh, what's the other one <coughs> autophagy autophagy so you get these <coughs> things and uh, so describe and that's the thing I really wanted to push home to, to people is like when you let the body finally catch up on some of these issues it's amazing what it can do when you give it a break but you, you can't know? change the oil on your car unless you shut it down you know you have to sh turn it off and let it cool off and you can get in there and work on stuff. Not going to happen if it's keeping mm -hmm. on running. Yeah, the, so majority, the majority of people probably never see ketosis even. With like, a day fast or like a no, two-day fast? No, like, just living their lives. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, no. Like, so no. you don't even get to – like your body – like ketones are great for your brain. And you could probably – like I, I – You've ate done a, a lot of – tell us about you because well, that's I've how you lost a, the majority of your weight, yeah, right? Yeah, so I, I was heavy, didn't go to the gym. Yeah, kind of uh, living an unhealthy lifestyle. And I lost most of my weight doing a keto diet right. combined with fasting. Um, and, amazing. yeah, over time, number one, that adaption haps happens, especially when you combine fasting with a keto diet. So your body's just already running on ketones from how you're eating. Just and then ready you just to go. naturally go into yeah. a fast. It's not a problem. Yeah. Wow. Um, that must have been awesome. So, yeah. So, like, you could, like, the majority of people aren't even experiencing ketosis ever. No. And unless they're on a keto diet, that's actually a keto diet. 
mm. or they're doing longer. Like if I, I think if they did one meal a day, they could they're probably maybe hitting ketosis depending on what that one meal primarily consists of. If they did it for like a week straight and they were like obese, then they would start. Yeah, it would yeah. take a while. What, what was your feelings like when you went from that lifestyle to that one? What were the main changes? Hmm. Just um, not just the weight loss, but like some of the feelings, stuff like that. I mean, you just feel overall healthier, clearer mind. Um, I wouldn't say that, like it's been so long. It's not. It's not like I have like drastic memories in my head of these before and after feelings. So. I can't exactly describe it. But well, did you um, do any fasting, or was it just ketosis, like a diet thing? Did you do no, any I, intermittent I fasting do, or anything? I would do a- intermittent fasting. I did every day. I okay. almost did like a one meal a day diet. So what was your window, your feeding window? <laughs> it shifted, but a lot. I did a four-hour window. A lot four-hour window. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty strenuous. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How many then, calories in that four hours? Probably like two thousand. Woo! It kind of depends on the when I, if stomach, I was yeah. cutting. <laughs> Like so I got you good. Like it's easy for me to eat two thousand calories in one sitting now because of that. <laughs> and what were you eating? Um, I was eating a lot. Eggs were a, a big source of my protein with and yolks. Yes. Okay. Good. Eggs and then beef. Um, so that was a big source. And then I would um, it would just vary on what I throw in with that as mm-hmm. the other things from avo- avocados to like low carb. Whatever you could find low carb, I just kind of rotate it in because it does get kind of boring. It's like a squashes hard, and stuff it's a like hard that. Diet to mm-hmm. like keep up with. Like yeah, it you, does. You can't if you can't go out to eat really and find much to eat. Um, Very restrictive. You know, I'm an advocate of it to lose weight, but I'm <clears throat> definitely not like it. I don't think it's a like a long term. Yeah, you have to diet. be good diet crazy at all. To keep it long term. <laughs> no, we're omnivores. We're yeah, supposed but, to have uh, a varied diet. Some people yeah, are. It, it's a it's a great way to because you natu- it's naturally hard to eat a lot of high fat foods like keto diets require it's just like you can just eat carbs gallbladder sometimes you need the uh what's it called some of the it's yeah it can be hard on your diet your gallbladder sometimes just won't produce enough uh to 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 break it down bile yeah you know you need bile salts and stuff some guys have to yeah because i you know you eat 10 eggs and half a pound of beef let's just say in a day that's 10 eggs 700 that's only like maybe 1200 calories and you're full like yeah, good luck, it's heavy. And it, good luck getting up to two thousand after that. Yeah. Um. So it's pretty. It's pretty hard to overeat, from my experience, and that's why I lost weight. Mm-hmm. I would say. Mm-hmm. Right, because you don't get any of those, you and know, calorically rich, dense foods. Yeah. You have to eat a lot. It's and work. I would throw in jaws are working all day. I would throw in fast there. I did a couple forty-eight hour fasts, a seventy-two hour fast. Nice. Um, nice. Just kind of as just throwing them in there. And what right was that in. like for you? What were your purpose? Was that just to lose weight, or were you doing that for your your walk with God? It w- it was mainly health reasons at okay. that point. And then the seventy two hour one, it was like three of us at work did it as a challenge against yeah. each other. So did <laughs> you ever try? <clears throat> yeah, that's cool to fast with people too, guys. for spiritual reasons. Did yeah. you ever? Okay, what was that like? Um, and when did that begin for you? Because you've been walking with the Lord for a long time. I haven't used fasting in that way uh, much. Um, okay. So I've done it somewhat recently, um, probably what six months ago, and it was. Uh, it, I would I would say I would have to do it more to say I noticed like something different out of it versus my daily walk with God. I would say. Yeah, yeah. Well, fasting is I've learned it's like it takes practice, just like prayer does. It takes doing it. It takes making it a part of your life. And mm. I think that it's mentioned so many times in the Bible to where, you know, the Bible is not going to, it's not like, there's a lot of times I wish the Bible would be totally direct, you know, and it is direct. If you're reading it, the whole thing, you're going to see these, um, the same thing happen, like Daniel preparing to, to the, actually after Daniel fasted, look what happened. Israel was brought into a place where they 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 were getting, um, the attention from God that they needed, right? So then you see Jesus fasting before. So you see these uh, commonalities within fasting and then having stuff happen, right? So it's like, I wish it was more direct, but it requires practice, like well, prayer. Well, my does. question, for sure, because you guys do it routinely. Yeah. I would view it for myself. I would use it uh, circumstantially, I would say. Like yeah. if I got a big decision to make or a big question answered, then I would use it. That's the way it started I w- for us. I won't use it routinely. Yeah. Um, and that's just because of how I view they used it in the Bible. Like, you don't really hear anyone talk. It's usually some drastic fast once or twice. Moses did it, what, three times? Mm-hmm. 
Yep. So that's just kind of my view on it. Depends on how many drastic things you got going on yeah. in your life. You know, exactly. how are you going to judge that? So for yeah. me, like with a very new, like with the Iron Disciples, it was like, I, I know nothing about this. So I'm not, I don't have, you know, it took me a while to find a mentor to be subjected to, sub, subject to. Like the whole thing was brand new and came out of left field. So I agree. Um, if you're going to fast, like some people have, like say for instance, older people, right? They've been walking with the Lord for a long time. Maybe they're not in mission work, but they le- live sort of a relatively calm life. Um, what are you inspiring in your walk? Because God's calling you to do stuff every day. Um, you're not, there's no just cruise control with your faith. You're, you're doing stuff until you die. Um, that's also pretty common. I don't, and that's why I, everybody's going to use uh, fasting possibly differently, but I think you should experiment with it, and I think it should be a consistent thing. I, and I want to encourage people to do that because I didn't know um, the benefits of it until it took time. Um, and then after that time had passed, my experience with the fasting was there. I started to understand some of what wasn't written in the Bible. Some of those things where if there's poetry written about fasting and closeness with God and you're able to really expound and live in that, um, you just be like, man, of course I want that. You know, at that point, the Bible would be selling it to you. But um, it, like in Matthew, it talks about when the disciples go out, they can't get a demon out. It's like, well, what do we do? And he's like, well, these demons can only come out with fasting and prayer. So... Uh, if you want a close walk, you know, what I think about it, it's like, okay, if they're using this for important situations to get something done, it's obviously a very, very powerful tool. So why not use it as much as you can? I mean, it's, it can fit in with your routine, right? Um, so I think that that's the way I look at it. It's obviously not a mandate. I don't think you're, you know, if you don't fast your whole life and you have a great prayer life and do a lot of other things, I don't think God's like, well, you know, you, you didn't do the fasting, so I'm not making it into heaven or something like that. I don't think it's like that. But um, if you're if you're if you're eager to get close to God, it's a wonderful tool. I totally agree. And um, there's a couple different types of fasting. So we do what's called like a prolonged fast. Um, you can do intermittent fasting, like um, Mike did here, which is usually within a 24-hour window. You can have an eating window or when you eat between like eight to four hours. Some people do more. I think it's a little bogus after eight hours. Um, and then you can have fasting mimicking. So a fasting mimicking diet's almost like a prolonged fast, um, except you're eating fibrous, very low carbohydrate vegetables. Now this fasting is great if you have digestive issues, inflamed colon, um, any type of stuff like that. It's way It's better than doing just a water fast. Um, so those are, those are some fasting options for you guys. Cause some people might not be able to do a water fast. Maybe it's like too brutal for them. They need to eat like a cucumber or something or like a salad or something. And maybe they do have some gastrointestinal issues where like their colon's inflamed. Um, that has been proven to help a lot with it more than just a water fast. Um, intermittent fasting, you can utilize that every day like Mike did, um, you can do that year round if when you want to. When we did to. our 72-hour fast, we did we did drink bone broth during mm. it. Did you? Probably like 50 calories of it of the day. Okay. See, I'm not a fan of turning on the gas. I don't even, like, I brush my teeth before, and I keep my teeth clean, but I don't even use toothpaste or artificial sweeteners or anything to, to, to get my insulin up. Because some insulin, some, some are artificial, many of them, just the saliva in your mouth, the taste of something sweet, even though it's not... It's, it's, yeah, it'll it's, trigger everything. It'll trigger your uh, to some degree. Your your yeah, yeah you'll, your digestive tract will turn out. Even smelling food, like Julie was cooking last night, amazing oh, food. Oh yeah, and I was like, "Yep, there it goes." You know, that's all it takes. <laughs> um, so, and that's that's okay too. Like I used to cook dinner for the family when I was yeah, on a fast. Yeah. You know, we worked on the studio yesterday. We, we try to stay busy and have a normal life. Yeah, I do take. That's like, a big point. You want to um, surf when you're fasting. You want to surf. You want to lay in bed That's all day. That's how you get the benefits yeah. of it, especially yeah. when you get better at fasting. Uh, maybe the first couple times you might be like need the rest, uh, but once you get better at it, it's cool. You, you'll get you'll be able to, to live more and to to act more. And, and for people who are active. interested in like the spiritual uh, self control, um, the carnal self control, fasting in the Bible is always food. Sometimes they would uh, not drink rich stuff; they only eat vegetables. It's funny you bring that up because mm-hmm. sometimes they would just do that. Um, but you can fast from different stuff. You yeah, know, you like, can. If you, like for me, I fast off of social, social media. media when I'm on my fast. I, I take a break from all that. Um, I try my best to think of things that are taking my attention 
and my desire and what you become dependent on dopamine pretty you know, much like i mean a yeah. lot of the time you what you're dependent on um you're going to you're going to you're going to hold it closest to your heart you know you're going you're not going to want to surrender that so Don't even like playing guitar or, or something like that it could be anything and you really have to do some introspective searching to see what that is cuz what you're doing is you're sh- showing god you know like this is not idolatry right like i'm surrendering this whatever it is if i'm putting you know 4 or 5 hours into my guitar and um writing music and stuff even though that's a form of worship and that's a ministry you know it's still saying that that is not taking your place lord even food is not taking your place um so you do that introspective work and for everybody it's different you know some people it's tv you know other people it might even be the gym you know or, or some kind of dependent thing where your character is so wrapped up in it that when you take a day or two away from it, you really feel like, who am I, right? And then God can step in and be that who are you part for you. You start to identify in Christ. And that transition point is what the benefit of fasting is. It reaffirms to you that Christ is your is your, is your, your root and the, you are a temple for Christ. And it really pushes, pushes that reality back into your life. And in being a man or a woman in this world in the West, you have so much you can do with your spare time. Um, so you're either going to think about these things and be, and it's going to take time to be honest, you know, and say like, what do I really hold close? It you know, definitely what's competing tells for that. God's attention. Um, so you'll have that experience and it's a tough little thing to go through. Um, like for me, I don't really like social media. I don't really post that much, but I, I'm on it a lot. You know, and I look at my phone at the end of the week and I'm always surprised. I'm like, man, I'm not posting. I'm looking at you're stuff, guitar videos. I'm a consumer. Right. So, um, getting honest with that time spent is, is something that, you know, you'll, you'll be surprised. Um, so I think that's one thing fasting is great for is, um, being able to say no. Um, cause you're, you're getting hungry. You're constantly going up, oh, not allowed to do that. We're not eating. I'm not even gonna look at food, you know, or, um, you, you, you build this willpower and discipline over your, f- your carnal body. That's why I liked it the most, which is fantastic challenge. because after you're done doing it, you have, your, bro- your brain will start presenting the same things, whether it's social media or whether it's like what your all these weak points in your life. All of a sudden, you can take them on a lot better. You're just like, yep, yeah, that's a no, and no, and you know, you're able to just kind of bulldog ahead a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it fortifies your will, it fortifies your discipline, it makes you a more um, powerful human being. Yeah, every think. time you're saying no, you're actually saying yes. That's to right. Something else, and so when you're saying no. And you're training your mind on something like I was talking to you guys and Shannon. Uh, was it Shannon? I had this thing where I was trying to put my mind on a thought, you know, like, oh, yeah. take a word. One word. That was One word. On the last podcast. OK. Yeah. That's yeah. where we're talking about it. And I trained my mind on, you know, what does it mean to be a disciple or uh, what does um, some of the words like discipline, um, truth, being honest with oneself. Um, little things could be a word or a phrase and train my mind on it and not allow it to to divert it's like know, a meditation. Or run away it's absolutely a form of meditation yeah. but um, when you're saying no like Joe had said you're saying no you're saying no to other thoughts you're saying no to that static to that interference um, yeah because it starts off with dopamine like f- you need to feed your body your body makes you feel good for eating it's obviously going to give you all kinds of reward and serotonin and it makes you feel good um, then you can kind of build this towards other things in your life, which are which are going to give you dopamine. And then most of the time, it starts off with like that type of the distractions, which are most of the time dopaminergic responses that we are like you know rat in the wheel, you know coded to respond to. That I just we feel like it's ADD. Toward. You know, well, like I, I can't based tell on you how many times like the thought train for something I want to think about is just difficult to inspire. It's not easy to think on something. So when you're tra- when you train your mind on something, you have a discipline to say yes to the thoughts you want and no to the static. You feel more of yourself. You feel like you're making these decisions instead of being some puppet, you know, uh, animated by social media, animated by your dopaminergic systems. So you get a lot of confidence. You feel like discipline is freedom. Jocko Williams said that. You know they're dealing with. Will. Sorry. (laughs) What I keep saying, William. William. (laughs) So weird. Um, But those guys are dealing with an opposite thing, where they're facing fear and death in the eye, and completely uh, messed up, out of control situations where you, if you were to take in every single variable, your brain would explode. 
and they have to rely on different guys to do their jobs to be a well-oiled machine in certain in these completely complex and insane situations and circumstances so they're having to say no to like their critical instincts of like get the hell out of here like the like the iraqi shoulders are they're like running away with their AK, just shooting like back. shooting back but like yeah. just freaked out so yeah discipline is so important you know and taking on our fears our dopamine receptors our our hungers our pains you know any of these strong influences that are just like they take over the brain stem you know they go right yeah. down to the hypothalamus and you're like oh you know we that is an exercise so fasting is an exercise yeah. for those things and to build that spiritual and it just makes you into a more powerful man. Your body's going to adapt to it, too, and that's what I noticed. Cause, fun. That's a nice part. Yeah, even like doing the inter intermittent, uh, intermittent fasting life, it became easy. And at first, you know, it's a tough thing. And now, like, I haven't done it in years, and that's mainly because, like, I would prefer that even now. I could easily go back to that lifestyle, but I'm trying to gain weight. Yeah, you're trying so, to pack uh, on like, muscle. I'm just trying to eat as much as possible, and so I have to eat more times during the day. Yeah. Different um, goals for right now. Yeah, and yeah. so yeah. I, but mm -hmm. the time, like the time I did fast somewhat recently, it wasn't even hard really. Good, and, and that uh, just clicks right in. Yeah, it yeah. just clicks right into it. Muscle, yeah, system memory. Yeah. Um, another cool thing about fasting, um, is that within autophagy and apoptosis, so cancer. Cancer is a prolification of cells that is unbound. It's just like this. This is this mass growing, and um, autophagy. When you when you go into these deficits, in fact, it's known to to work against to, your cells. Are actually can take a look at themselves and go, "Is there cancer in here?" Oh, there, yeah, there is. So let's let's get rid of this. Um, so cancer is a big one. A lot of like heart disease, um, plaque in your arteries. Um. Uh, this, I, what else, man? The list is gigantic. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. What so goes on one with of the your body. things I wanted to touch because you asked me personally uh, about fasting. Uh, besides the spiritual thing, uh, which is why I do it. But uh, our mother's South American. She's Colombian, and she has exercised her whole life. She was a dan a ballerina, you know. So she's done that. She's always. Did eaten very well she cooks all of her food in her home you have to twist her arm if you're going to get her into a fast food restaurant she's hilarious because she really has this discipline with regard to her food and her walking you can't take that away from her and um, while she does have some vice she loves her bread she loves like some sweet things you know 90 percent of what she does is, is usually really good and she was a few years back this is about three years ago now she had um, some angina, and that's for no for people who don't know. That's um, where the the heart is not getting enough blood. So she'd be walking, and she'd get very fatigued, and she'd have to stop. And the doctors would per perform the normal tests on her heart and ask her the questions, blood tests, this kind of stuff, and she would check out fine. She kept on complaining of this, and it kept on persisting, getting worse. My dad's like, "This is not good." So she went and got some more tests in her heart, looking at the arteries and seeing how clogged they were. Um, these are tests you have to ask your doctor. And if anybody's South American or knows they have a heart test, right? No, that's different. That's for your heart. That's the number one test for your heart. There's two different arteries that's you can the get one checked. To go for. That that actually is helpful when you get older. But if you're if you have a proclivity to storing cholesterol into your into your veins, it's not going to show very much. Yes, it will. You, I've looked it up. I talked to my cardiologist the other week. She said, no, it will not. It's not going to show in the arteries. It's plaque. There's different kinds. Plaque is hard. For it's us, calcium. we're not going to have plaque. We're going to have just buildup of fat, and it's not going to show up on that. It's very different. Well, the way that it's it works. It's a different material. No, the way that it works thing. is the calcium. I, so your artery gets inflamed, and your artery has lesions that occur in it. Okay? Yes. So then what your, your body does is it puts in calcium which is hard like a stint your body creates for itself and okay it so let me describe the process that my cardiologist described to me this i told her this same thing and she said yours came out fine the but fat that gets does hooked, not mean the way you get plaque is the ha the fat gets hooked on to the okay. the uh, the calcium which is hard that's how that's how you get plaque buildup. Plaque doesn't just build up on smooth arteries. Plaque does not does not, not build only, up on smooth arteries. Not you can the eat only a bunch of fat and have up in non inflamed arteries and that fat cruise right through. Yeah, well that's not the only way it is. I talked to her about it, I asked her, she's like frequently people will have perfect calcium stores, but they will still have buildup inside their arteries. So there's two tests. 
I we can maybe put it in the in the uh, description that you should get. This is the test my mother got because uh, uh, the plaque test is cheap. It's like fifty bucks. These other ones, they're actually going in and looking at the arteries. That's what my mom had happen. So they went in and they looked at the arteries and they found out she had some severe blockages. They had to go and put in stents. And so I'm here, you know, 30 years old listening to this and very concerned for my mom. I'm terrified. You know, my mom's the last person on earth I expected to have heart problems. I was shocked. Joe and I were sitting there going, what is going on here? This woman's eating good. She's exercising. She's following all the rules. And she's sitting here dealing with severe I wouldn't say so, but you, no, her diet's not, no. It's not perfect, but when you consider other people's diets of her super age. Super high carbohydrates. Are, she's not, not super high. She has like a couple pieces of toast in the morning. Most people do. So when you consider the fact that her diet's not exorbitantly horrible and she exercises all the time, then yeah, it's actually pretty good. I look at what mom eats. So yeah, it's not perfect. But the point that I'm making here is that it, it brought up a very important question for us, and that was what do we do to counteract this issue? And so I started thinking deeply about the, her, the hereditary issue that, that is present because it's a hereditary thing. Her body, what her body does, which she gave me and my body, and Joe and I's body, um, is a proclivity to store fat in the arteries. Okay, So I started thinking about this a lot. I started doing research on different uh, people groups of the world and, and why there is a higher degree of South Americans... Um, mainly tropical climate people who have high blood pressure and have high cholesterol. This is very common. When you go to the northern hemispheres, people who are living in northern climates, that is not as, as, as serious of an issue for them. And so I started to think about this. None of this is substantiated. These are just my reflections on the issue, okay? So this is not scientifically based. It's just thoughts. But um, I started looking at the, the points of... Um, of, of scarcity for these people groups as they've sort of evolved and been alive on the planet. So the, the tropical cultures, their scarcity was usually during the rainy season. Um, it was, it's two to three months, sometimes less, um, and they wouldn't eat as much. They would have a, as rich of a diet for those that period of time. So the other portion of the year, their body would be storing fat, getting ready for this scarcity season, and the light bulb went off. I said, well, they're in a hot place. They don't need to store fat on the outside of their body the way somebody would if they were living you know, in Norway or somewhere else where it's cold. So the body's smart. It's going to say, I don't need fat for the winter. It's going to be a longer period of time. I'm going to store it in the, the fat on the round. It's going to serve two purposes. It's going to be food storage as well as insulation. Okay? So for the South Americans tropical climate they don't need insulation it's hot so their body's going to go to where it's most quickly stored and, and most quickly absorbed the arteries no it'll go on organs but not in your arteries it's going to be stored yeah it's going to be arteries are smooth you're running talking about machines that you yeah. can pump as fat through them you can do the, when when you get a cloggage or build up it's because there is cal there's a lesion in your artery think about your pipes getting rusted that's otherwise if the the you have free flowing. That's the way they're made. What causes they those don't lesions, you don't can, you don't hold fat within arteries. What for causes no those lesions? Inflammation. Okay. Why is that inflammation being present? Oh, it could happen for a number. Maybe you're eating too many vegetable oils. You know that's a big one in today's too many processed sugars. All both of those things which are high in our diets nowadays. A lot of people eat a, a ton of vegetable oils, rapeseed oils, um, lots of processed sugars. Um, those will inflame your arteries in an instant. The know, point, <coughs> Paul Saladino, he brings up, he, he's been saying, you know, the carnivore diet guy, so he thinks cholesterol has nothing to do with it. It's the inflama inflamed arteries and then high cholesterol running through them. Yeah, it gets that clogged gets stuck on up. It, cause you're so like, it's not necessarily cholesterol's fault in and of itself. It's because no. most of the time someone with high cholesterol also has inflammation going on. Yeah, and like I was saying, like so the lesion happens in your artery. And then what your body does is it, it tries to fortify it with its own stint that's made out of calcium because it's the hardest thing it can figure out. Now, that calcium is what holds on to the fat. That's what accumulates the fat, and that's how you get that. So it's the lesion. Then it's what your body uses, the calcium, to repair this lesion, this soft spot. And then that's what holds the fat, and that's what builds up the fat within it. So if you don't have within fat within the artery. Yeah, time. 
So if you don't have fat, see, I disagree with you. I think I've done my own research on that, and you're saying that fat has nothing to do with having the calcium buildup. You're saying it's just from inflammation. I'm saying that I the, know the that inflammation when you take, causes when calcium you buildup, the which blood, causes fat buildup. When you take the cholesterol results from people who have high cholesterol, they have a higher degree of uh, that kind of buildup, and it's not going to show up with the, the calcium scores all the time. Well, it so makes sense because you if can you're eating your, more fat and you have more inflamed arteries, yeah. you're going to have a, a, a higher buildup rate than if someone who does not have much fat. It's just, it's just it just makes sense. There are sense. people who have a ton of fat all over their bodies, and they still have crystal clear running arteries. Yeah, because their arteries aren't inflamed. Yeah. Well, they're still eating all that stuff, so there's a genetic factor It's just passing through like it should. Like it should. Your arteries should be smooth cylinders beautifully. I mean, I mean everything goes through them. Paul will be a good exper- experiment if he's still alive in like 10 years because his <laughs> cholesterol is like 3, 4x. Who's time, no kidding? Time, what it should be. I That's think it gnarly. 300 or 400. Whoa. And Who's this? Paul Saladino, he's they call him the carnivore MD, and so he eats a you know mostly animal based diet. Um, it's not as strict as it used to be. I think he eats a lot more fruit now, but yeah, his cholesterol levels were through the roof. But his HDL was high too, right? I think so. So his ratio is probably pretty even. He probably has really high HDL, but all, he has a really high LDL, but he also has probably really high HDL. Yeah, which, he also which had a is, perfect calcium score too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, and then your triglycerides are another important thing to say because that is those are really big and they're getting bigger actually than the LDL HDL lately. So like if it's you have lower I, triglycerides, you're probably going to be okay. Listening to a couple of those podcasts and them debating about it tells me they still have so much to learn about those. Oh my gosh! Those things. Yeah, there's people that have like clean heart scans. They're like I just well, my heart checked, lad, dying of a heart attack the next month. It's like how well does that work? Obviously not that well. There's a lot of different. That's what I was trying to Getting tell the audience. Cardiograms. There's a awesome. lot of um tests that you should ask for if you have a proclivity towards this like i was describing my mother joe and i have very different uh, ideas of cholesterol and the way that it works as you said some people can have very high cholesterol and their arteries won't inflame they won't cause lesions they won't have the calcium buildup that is a genetic thing the body will make certain kinds of uh, fats you don't have to eat fat for your body to make fat something for you to think about and there's ketones different, are fat they yeah. are fat your, your liver turns carbs into fat. Your body will react differently to foods depending on your 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 genetics. Yeah, if you period. live closer to the so, equator, genetically speaking, you're more through th- your heritage has been more around carbohydrates, so you can digest them easier. There's six there's six <coughs> genes in your DNA that allow you to either digest carbs really well or not. And if you are farther toward the northern or southern hemispheres, where you're more less inclined to have fruits and grains and all great a longer s- growing season, then you're going to have a harder time digesting carbs and probably hold on to more fat. And like John said, it's going to be more epidermis. It's going to be more the fat that you do hold is going to be on the outside of your body. Whereas if you're like an equator person, you're going to have more organ fat. That's what I was saying. And so to complete that thought before you went on your uh, idea of fat and whatever, what I wanted Black to, to, to yeah. as, as an issue that I was trying to face and deal with, um, saw coming, like I saw my mother, um, I was saying I, I had this in the back of my mind that if I fasted for a long period of time, it would help clear those arteries. It would help clear these things. I would be having an artificial rainy season that I kind of protracted throughout the year and was able to pick up on that. So my body had that still um, and hopefully would keep that cholesterol down. Um, so that was the idea. And for any of those people struggling with high cholesterol, stuff like that, and their diets are great and they don't want to take medication, again, this is not substantiated by science, but it's a thought worth thinking about. Another thing is fiber. We took silomel husk and I went from like 260 down to like one, one. 170 i mean pretty amazing and they also say oh yeah dude your fat's not going to go through your diet you're not going to hold it onto your fi- on, onto fiber and you're not going to crap it out well that's not true i can guarantee you guys um it's a nice quick fix it took me about a month to do it and i just it supplemented it with every meal especially high fat meals and then 25 boom. to 30 grams silly musk yeah chug it down with some water really good stuff and like what we're talking about, there's so many other good benefits to fasting, um, and it's mostly longevity based and disease resistance because it's all about preservation when you're fasting. You're not in a de- you're in a deficit. You're in a deprived deprived body's deprived. When you're in an excess thing, 
and you know you're eating right and everything else your body's burning things it's using things it's like we can do we can keep moving on so god made it this way for a reason and that's why it's it's such a great tool to use spiritually to deprive yourself to the willpower the discipline the being able to turn things on to say no which you're saying yes to other things um it's super powerful and great for your body and your spirit experiment with it have yeah. fun with it and um and one thing we didn't touch on was prayer i just how much time do we have because i wanted to say a couple words about prayer we have a few minutes yeah okay um the bible nowadays a really popular word that's thrown around um now in the secular culture is meditation people are like you need time to meditate find some uh quiet place and you know allow yourself to unwind um sam harris has a an app i think it's called calm and that's his uh, app it's one of them it's it works like calm hmm. yeah um, it's, it's not calm but is it, it no it's it, similar to it um they have voice speaking to you in a very calm way and then you sort of are able to focus your mind very useful and the world uh people everywhere experience extraordinarily good results from this stuff and uh, the Bible doesn't use the word meditation, but it's present, and that's prayer. So prayer isn't always asking God for stuff you want. It's not always uh, petitioning or pleading. Those things are part of prayer, and you should definitely use them. However, meditation is a good word to think about as a sister word to what prayer can, to, can be like and how it can enhance your life. Mm-hmm. Being silent with the Lord, you know, a- appreciating simple things with the lord like peace and going to a place like that's nice sitting by a lake maybe um and appreciating god's creation you see david do that in his psalms all the time um lamenting um they're all different forms of meditation and prayer is what the bible sort of uses to describe that and so for people who are because i see a lot of this new age culture come and you're like, well, none of this is in the Bible. It's like, well, y- they're just using different words to describe it. And so prayer is something that if you if your prayer life seems repetitive or redundant, you know, um, allow God to work in that and maybe explore some more meditative types of prayer to, f- to feed your heart and soul. When I'm fasting, I'll have some silence in the morning and, um, you know, I'll be praising God in my own way in this reverence and this will sort of begin to vibrate and it is it is a very wonderful place to be. You're not asking for anything. You're not doing it. It's just like peaceful, thanksgiving, gracious gratitude. And um, that's something you can have. That's something the Bible talks about a lot. Um, so I did want to bring that up um, to talk about that uh, as meditation. And the diff- prayer is such a, there's so much that you can do when you pray. It's talking about communion with God. And uh, how many time, How many different ways can we hang out? We can go to the gym. We can eat. We can talk. We can enjoy silence together. Um, God is definitely an incredible. He's, he's the most incredible being. So yeah, how many if you're just viewing prayer as a way to ask for things or petition things, or that's very short. <laughs> like there's yeah. so much more to it. Exactly. Totally. Yeah. And um, another thing is is when you're fasting, you have to um, confront your demons. And prayer is a part of that. And I think John and I talk about self-talk. So um, you're oftentimes feeling like crap, but you're like, I feel amazing. You know, I'm grateful. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you have this spirit of thankfulness in in the in these troubled times. And that is, one of the, I think, one of the most amazing types of prayer because um, it fortifies your spirit in line with God's. Because he likes, to, he, he's all about sacrifice. I mean, Christ died. I mean, he put himself in. The whole story is just showing what the most powerful being in the world does for the things he loves. So um, I think it helps with self-talk a lot. And um, maybe not being, it's it's funny because, like, you don't feel great. But you're like, I feel great. I love this. I feel like a million bucks. And then you start to believe it. And it starts to make life easier. Yeah, the really Bible don't. talks about the power of the word. Yeah. God created everything through a word. So if you're, we talk being positive in yourself, talk, being honest with yourself, not allowing that um, deception or like uh, Jordan Peterson talks about willful blindness when you're afraid of something or to witness or to realize something about yourself that may be really hard. Um, so have that positive self-talk. And it's not uh, toxic optimism. Really what you're doing is you're confronting uh, the fact that you might not 
that you have to claim victory because we have to claim victories through words. You know, I am a new creation. You know, I have died on the cross with Christ. These things you proclaim and declare and claim, and through the power of that word, you begin to live it. The power of the word cannot be understated. You know, people use words to bring ideas into the world, and those ideas bring material things into the world, and from there you have a changed world. So, yeah, your self-talk, the way you pray, of it is, and it's a good way to end because I know we have to. And I always want to say it's a bit prayer. of humor, too, for me. You know, I'll crack jokes to myself, and I'll talk to God and be laughing. You know, I think that's so important. Everyone, is the, I think he loves humor, and there's not enough of it talked about. And sort of like my relationship with God, it's like yeah, I know he laughs at, like, a bunch of the stuff I do because I know he's not, He know he loves me. And he's like, here you go, Joe, you're doing that again. Like, okay. And I'm like, yes, I feel amazing, Lord. Thank you so much. And then, you know, there's this smile. There's a joy. You know, there's sort of like this, um, it's just happiness. And there's a joy there. And um, that's available, too. Right on. Uh, wonderful. Uh, so I guess we pray. I'm not used to not being able to grab yeah, your guys' hands. I'm ready to go reach so over for Mike. <laughs> <laughs> touch each other's toes, you know? Hey! Okay. So um, thank you, Father, for this new room, this incredible uh, gift of space and the money to put this together and the time and the effort. Um, this is wonderful, Lord. Thanks for this first day enjoying this space together and glorifying you. We pray blessings on the audience and these men and women listening, that their prayer lives will be enhanced, that their interest in the tools you've given us, and you're a God that was the king and was humble and a servant. So our, our tools may appear humble. We know they appear humble on the surface, but they're incredibly powerful. So enc encourage these, these men and women and ourselves to, to take interest in them and to allow you to reveal how powerful they truly are and to to enjoy those gifts and those fruits father those fruits that are that are that come from fasting and prayer we want our brothers and sisters to grow we want them to enjoy this we want them to be here with us growing and glorifying you we want to be those people in, in in the storm that are are the crazy people praising you and that are just joyful with that beautiful luminance of the of the Lord, of your Holy Spirit. So thank you so much for these gifts. Thank you for giving us the ability to talk about them. And we hope that people will, will incur be encouraged to use them. Thank you for this beautiful life, Lord. We want to live for you. We want to love you more. And uh, we love you, Lord. In Jesus' beautiful name, amen. Amen. amen.